Morning Leadership. Eight mentoring sessions you can't afford to miss. The sixth Monday, do less or work faster. By this time, I so looked forward to my Monday mornings with Tony that I was getting up much earlier and feeling much better about so many aspects of what had once been such a disaster area, both at work and at home. I pulled into Tony's driveway, well, before our meeting time, but when I rang the bell, Tony appeared as charming as always. Good morning, Jeff, he said. How are things going? Did you make any progress filling your open positions? Kim and I interviewed all 20 candidates for the three open positions. It was pretty taxing, but Kim provided me with a good process to follow, and we have narrowed the 20 down to nine possible candidates. The final round of interviews are scheduled for Wednesday. Thursday and Friday this week. By our next meeting, I should have offered the jobs to the three best candidates. And I'll tell you, after our conversation last week, I'm taking the hiring process much more seriously, I confess. But this hiring process has been so time consuming, I've hardly done anything else. That's another issue I want to hear your insights on. How do I get everything done? Even though I feel I made a lot of progress during our sessions, it seems my time continues to be consumed by things outside my control. It's frustrating because I want to spend more time with my team and my family. Jeff, you sound the same as you did in our first meeting. Woe well, is me. I have no control over time. Well. It sounds to me like you may be blaming your personal time management problem on things outside your control. Let me ask you this. Who can spend your time but you? Aren't you being a little harsh? I countered defensively. I simply said, I seem to be consumed by things I feel I don't have much control over and so I'm not able to do the important things I need and want to do. Sorry if I came across harshly, Tony apologized. I'm trying to make a point. Your time is your responsibility. If you aren't able to do the important things, only you can solve that problem. Your team is depending on you to be there for them, and that includes solving your personal problems. One of the major sources of stress, anxiety, and unhappiness comes from feeling like your life is out of control. You need to figure out ways to take control of your time so that you can take control of your life. Of course, there are some things you can't change about the way we spend our time. We have to wait in lines at red lights for elevators and things like that. There's not much we can do about those things. However, there's a lot we can do about situations at work. Jeff, I've studied time management for years. In fact, it's one of my favorite pastimes. Now I've discovered that there are no magic bullets when it comes to time management. I've never found anyone who had two or three hours a day they could save by doing one thing better. But I have seen many people find an hour or two a day they could use better by doing a few things differently. If you want to make better use of your time, you need to be looking for the small increments of time. A minute here, five minutes there, etc. Add them all up and you'll create more time for you to use. I have also found that the job seldom overworks the person, but people often overwork themselves by making bad time management decisions. The bottom line is that most people can't solve their time problem by working harder. Doing the wrong thing harder doesn't help. What we need to do is to find ways to shorten tasks, eliminate some steps, combine some tasks, and work easier while getting things done. There's a myth out there no one seems to recognize, and it's this. No one can save time. We all have the same amount, and we can't carry any time over to the next day. So, since we can't save time, we have to make better decisions on how we spend our time. 
I only know of two ways to spend time better. You can do less or you can do things faster. Those are our only choices. Of course, there are some things we could eliminate and just say no to. But for today's session, let's say that the only option we have is to work faster. So how can you work faster? That's the question we need to address. The first thing you need to figure out is where your time is currently going. If you want to make improvements, you've got to know what to improve. To find the answer, I suggest you track your time for two weeks so you can make some educated decisions about what to improve. You will find that your time is taken by the things we do and how we do things. Follow me on this. We spend our time doing the main things or doing the wrong things. And we spend our time doing things right or doing things wrong. For example, here's a chart showing the four choices of how we can spend our time in a meeting. The things we do. How we do the things we do. Main things right. Example, run a productive and necessary meeting. Main things wrong. Example, waste two hours during an important meeting. Wrong things wrong. Example, waste everyone's time at an unnecessary meeting. Wrong things right. Example, facilitate a great meeting that was not necessary. Everything we do can be categorized into one of those four choices. If you keep track for two weeks, you'll know what you can do to make some better decisions. You've already identified the main things in your department. Now classify your activities. Are you doing those main things and how well are you doing them? Most executives have three areas where they can make changes that will lead to major time improvements. Prioritizing, organizing, interruptions, and meetings. While preparing for a session, I gathered some of the best tips I found about managing my time in each of those areas. Let's talk about prioritizing and organizing first. You've probably heard of the Pareto Principle that states that 80% of your results will come from 20% of your activities. An Italian economist named Alfredo Pareto discovered the principle in the 18s when he observed that 20% of the people in Italy controlled 80% of the wealth. Then he began looking around and discovered that the 80-20 rule applied to many things and the Pareto Principle definitely applies to time management. It's your responsibility to yourself and your team to know where your highest payoff activities are and eliminate as many as you can of the ones that yield few results. Every time management guru will tell you to touch paper only once. The key to paper management is to keep the paper moving. Throw it away, act upon it, or put it into your reading pile. It may not be reasonable to only touch paper once in every situation, but remember, shuffling and reshuffling paper from pile to pile with no evaluation or action is wasting your time. It was difficult for me to discipline myself to do this, but I found that spending 20 uninterrupted minutes planning would yield the same results as 60 minutes of interrupted time if you can't set aside 20 minutes, get aside 10. That's still a great return on your time investment. Conduct an audit on every report that hits your inbox. Is the report really necessary? If not, eliminate it. If you only need a line item off a report, ask the originator of the report to eliminate the report and send you the line item. Clean your desk. I think you should always be able to see the majority of the top of your desk. Don't fool yourself into thinking that a cluttered desk makes you look important. A cluttered desk makes you look disorganized and contributes to the shuffling and reshuffling game. Control your email delivery. You don't go to your mailbox every 30 minutes, do you? I receive a lot of emails every day I could be at my computer all day just responding to emails. 
Instead, I work on my email deliveries into my personal schedule so that emails don't control my day. Batch activities. Do like activities together so that you're not starting and stopping all the time. Do all your voicemails at once. Turn all phone calls at one time. Write memos or letters at one sitting. Eliminate as many transits from one activity to another as possible. Here's a simple one that can give you 10, maybe 15 minutes every day. Go to lunch at 11 or one. Why everyone decides to go to lunch at noon is a mystery to me. They wait on their elevator, wait in line at the deli, wait in line to get back on the elevator, and then complain about not having enough time for lunch. Now let's talk about another key area of time management. Interruptions. Most people don't know who is interrupting them or why they're being interrupted. Keep track of who is interrupting you and why they're interrupting you. Then you can make informed decisions about how you're going to address the problem. I have found that even if you can't eliminate the interruption, you can keep it short. A general rule is this. The length of the interruption is in direct proportion to the comfort level of the interrupter. Don't let the interrupter sit down and get comfortable in your office. When someone comes into your office, stand up. You can take care of business standing up more quickly than in just as well as sitting down. Your furniture can even invite interruptions and steal some time from you. I suggest you arrange your furniture so that your desk doesn't face the flow of traffic. If you're looking at every person who walks down the hall, you'll be wasting a lot of time. Schedule one-on-one -on -one sessions with your staff and boss so that you can get as much as possible accomplished at one time. Gather everything you need to talk about and take care of it at one sitting rather than interrupting each other the minute something comes up. You may want to ask your team, what do I do that wastes your time and hinders your performance? Some of their suggestions may surprise you and could save you and your team valuable time. Finally, let's talk about one of the biggest time wasters I know of meetings. Jack, I've been to a gazillion meetings in my day and I've found that if everyone is prepared on time and focused, most meetings can be accomplished in half the time the meeting is currently taking. The average person wastes about 250 hours per year in unproductive meetings. That's a lot of time and money being wasted. Make your meetings productive, but short. Don't fall into the perpetually scheduled meeting syndrome where you're having meetings just because meetings are regularly scheduled. Make sure every meeting is absolutely necessary. Routine meetings are not a good investment unless they fulfill or move forward your objectives. Always begin a meeting by covering the most important items first. That way you ensure that you cover what you need to accomplish and you're not rushing through the main thing. When people show up late, don't recap what you've covered. When you recap, you're rewarding the tardy person and punishing the people who were on time. Probably the simplest tip that pays the biggest dividend in meeting management is to start and end your meetings on time. It's disrespectful and a bad investment to start a meeting later than scheduled. You waste 30 minutes of productivity by beginning a meeting with 10 people three minutes late. Think about that. These are just a few ideas to help you make better use of your time. There are many more. I suggest you invest some time in reading a book on time management. You look for several other areas where you can find a few extra minutes. Speaking of time, our time is about up for this week, said Tony, following his own counsel. So what are you going to do differently next week? Well, I'm going to finish the hiring process, I replied. That's the main thing of all main things this week. While you were talking, I was doing a self-check on the meetings I facilitate, and I know I can do a better job creating some additional time for my team and myself. I'm also going to track who interrupts me and the number of times that I interrupt others. 
I may be guilty of being the number one interrupter to my team members, and I'm going to buy a book on time management and search for other ideas to help me gain control of my time and my life. Great, Jeff. Tony's enthusiastic response energized my own resolve. Try out some of those ideas. I know you'll find some more time for yourself and your family. See you next week. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.